Welcome to www.rei-tv.com. I'm Nick, your host. Thanks for watching. Today we've got a great question that was sent in by one of our viewers. Drum roll, please. Oh, wrong note. This is one from an, from an attorney. Fan mail from a flounder. Um, hold on a second. Here we go. It's an acceptance letter, by the way, for an offer, but we'll take that. Well, kind of an acceptance letter. Long story, some other time. Anyway, you know, I'm always encouraging you guys to, and Glenn ladies, to send in questions that you have. I, I can't answer all of them. I get a whole bunch. Um, consider the extended membership, and you'll get all your questions answered because I'm on the phone with you guys. But in any case, this is from Rich, and Rich asks, or first Rich says, I really enjoyed the show, and I'm glad that I found REI-TV on the web, and I'm glad you found me too, Rich. Your show has really encouraged me to move forward with my dream of financial freedom through investing in real estate. I live in Georgia and I'm moving to Atlanta. Excellent place to be investing. There's lots of investors there. And don't get me wrong, that doesn't mean it's bad. That means it's good. There's plenty of people to flip houses to. There's plenty of bird dogs. Lots of good things going on in Atlanta. Um, I had a couple questions. I thought I'd see what you said. Here's the question. I have found several subject to deals with tons, we like that word, tons of equity. My long-term strategy is buy and hold, which is good. I may do some flipping, but I'd probably reinvest the profits into buy and hold property. So, Rich, it sounds like you're looking to build wealth over a long term. You know, a lot of times just flipping, 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 it's a lot of good short-term fast money, and it's a good way to get started in this business. But... It's really, you're not going to get filthy stinking rich unless you buy and hold stuff and just let appreciation take, you know, take you up and up and up. But in any case, Rich has a lot of Subject 2 deals with a lot of equity he's looking at, and here's his problem. If several of these Subject 2 deals come through and they sign the papers all at once, there will be no way for me to make all the payments while making repairs and or finding rentors. What would you do? Rich, here's exactly what I would do. One thing I don't do is sign a bunch of contracts and buy a bunch of houses sub two and have all these mortgage payments that I have to make. And as a matter of fact, I rarely make any mortgage payments on sub twos while I'm waiting to find my tenant because, lesson number one, I find my tenant before I close the deal. I go into the sub two deal saying, here's what's going to happen, Mr. Seller. I'm confident now it's going to work this way, but we're not going to close until I find my sub tenant ready to move in the house. So basically... It's a standard sub two contract, if you can call a sub two contract standard. <laughs> Ask a realtor. Um, no offense if you're a realtor, we love you. But uh, we go into the standard sub two contract with contingent upon us finding our buyer, or us finding our tenant, or subject to us finding our tenant or finding our buyer. That way, I don't make a single mortgage payment on that house until my guy has already paid me and has moved in or is ready to move in. In a lot of cases, we get to keep the first mortgage payment and then the, the tenant starts making the second and third. But in any case, put that contingency in your mortgage. This whole deal is co contingent upon us, contingent upon buyer finding a suitable sub-tenant to occupy the property. That way you get all the paperwork done and you don't close until you've got your guy ready to move in. That way you never have to make a mortgage payment while you're waiting to find your buyer. And right now the way the market is, there's lots of buyers out there and there's lots of sub two sellers out there. So the sub two sellers are desperate and the sub two buyers are plentiful. And when I say sub two buyers, don't sell it to them sub two, sell to them at least with an option to purchase. Disclaimer, Bell, just in case you're thinking or doing something different. There's more than one way to skin a house, but that's the way I would do it with the lease option. So make sure to get your get your buyer lined up before you close the deal, if you can, and put them in there. Now, if it's a home run, if it's got 60 grand in equity, I'll start making that mortgage payment yesterday to get my feet into that crummy little house because I know down the road it's going to make me a bundle. But most sub two houses... You know, there's not as much equity as a retail flip or something like that. So um, his other question uh, has to do with repairs. If several of these subject two deals come through and they sign the papers all at once, how am I going to make the repairs and make the mortgage payment? I don't make repairs on my subject two houses. I let my tenants do it. And here's what I do. And there's a whole video about this. You can go back and watch a whole episode of the Flip and Right Show. But uh, I tell my sub, my, I tell, I tell my prospective tenants, and when they call, I, I tell, you know, I ask them, how much do you have for like down payment or or an option fee? I don't say down payment. I say, how much do you have for an option fee or an option deposit, which is similar to a down payment. It comes off the price of the house. Whatever they say. Here's what my line is. Let's say they say I've got 6000 I say, well, you know, I was really looking for 12000 
but I can take the 6000 as the option fee and get you into the house if you're willing to take it without me putting in new carpet and paint and fixing that bathtub. Because I was going to go in and fix the bathtub and put in carpet and paint, and then I, you know, I, I know I can get $12,000 up front from somebody. But if you're willing to take it in as-is condition, I'll let you in with that $6,000. And it works almost all the time. I mean, I, I've never... I've never had a house that I had to go in and do the repairs that I couldn't fill otherwise. I have sold houses that looked really bad because remember, these lease option people, they're so happy to get a home instead of the apartment they're living in or, or whatever it is. They're so happy to get a house that they're going to own that they'll fix those things. And a lot of times it's not as bad in their eyes coming from where they're coming from as it might be in your eyes or in a realtor's eyes or somebody who does this as a living. So just tell them, I was looking to get this much. But now I'll get, the, I'll t you know, if you can come up with this much, you just reduce the amount. I'll let you take the house if you're willing to do the paint and carpet, and you'll always get it filled. So I just solved two of your problems. Make it contingent on you finding your buyer, Rich, and now you don't have to make any mortgage payments until you take over the house. Your buyer will come in, you'll make their option fee, put it in your pocket, and off to the bank. Secondly, uh, you won't have to do the repairs because you're going to let your tenant do that. Thirdly, it says... Is it possible to pull out equity from a property purchase subject to, with, say, a home equity loan or otherwise? I've never been able to put a home equity line on a house. I don't know. Maybe it is possible. I've never tried. Um, I doubt it. I don't know. But here's what I do. Here's how I pull cash out of every, not every, but almost every sub two house. I don't want that five thousand or six thousand. I'll take that five or six thousand up front, but I want to make fifteen or twenty thousand. So almost every house that I take subject to, I, I borrow ten grand from a private lender when I take over that house, and I pay like fifteen percent interest. Um, and I tell that private lender, Mr. Private Lender, I just bought a house. Um, I got a tenant in there in a year or two years, Mr. Mr. Lender, that tenant's going to buy the house for me. I would like to borrow $10,000 from you on that house, and I'll pay you 15% interest. I've even been known to pay 20% interest. I know to some of you that sounds like this huge amount of interest, but when you think about it, if I pay, here's what I tell them. It's 15% flat interest per calendar year, no payments until I sell it off. So he gives me ten grand when I take that house subject to. I know I now, I now owe... Speak up. I now owe him eleven $1 hundred and fifty dollars. Okay, after a year, I owe him thirteen thousand dollars. After two years, I owe him fourteen fifty. I hope to cash it out before then, but I don't really care because if it's a good enough deal to take some two and there's enough equity in there, I really don't mind. I'd rather have that ten thousand up front and pay that extra eleven fifty or thirteen thousand later because I want some cash now. So. Here's what I suspect, though, Rich. I suspect you're trying to borrow money on these sub twos because you don't have the money to do the repairs and to make some mortgage payments. If you follow those le those last two tips I gave you by making sure you got your tenant before you close and by having your tenant do the repairs, you don't need to borrow money on that sub two house. I hope that's helpful for you, Rich. I hope that's helpful for some other people. It probably is. It were things I didn't do when I first got in the business, and I do now. I love answering your guys' questions. Send them to flip and help at gmail.com, F-L-I-P-P-I-N, oh my gosh, I said P-P, F-L-I-P-P-I-N, help, at gmail.com, some I get to, some I don't, but I try, I'm Nick, this is www.rei-tv.com, and the Flippin' Right Show, thanks for watching, come back early, come back often, make sure you're a free member, sign up on the link down below, and you'll get a bunch of other goodies, thanks for watching, I'm Nick, signing out, now go make an offer.